Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Yardbird in, Yardbird in the five minute pool on ICC. Yardbird is a perennial opponent in the five minute pool. This is uh, Eric Lobron. Well, let's do a Scandinavian against him. Gotta try our favorite defense against the legendary Yardbird. Yeah, Chess Explained has played him quite a bit. Um, I'll play c6. I'm gonna play this in conventional fashion. There are some experimental lines that black can try, like bishop d7 to c6 is one of them that I played. Okay, if I take, he plays rook b1, and then after queen d6, he gets at my pawn on b7, so I won't be doing that. I think a6 is reasonable right now, just to stop b5. He'll play rook b1 and then a4 and try to renew the threat, but that's all right. Now, he can't push b5 because I was going to take. Um, I think I want to wait for him to play b5 before I move this knight. I think that's how we're supposed to play it. Just trying to remember. Bishop d6. Yeah, let's go bishop d6. I've played this player many times as well. Um, not as many as Kristoff, but <laughs> um, I could go back and look at my record against him. In fact, I'll do that after the game if I remember. Okay, let's just castle. So if b5, I can I can leave it, uh, or I can take once with the a pawn. I think taking once with the a pawn makes more sense. How do I proceed thereafter? Let's just take once and then decide, like knight d5 or c5. c5 is a legitimate, legitimate option, but if c5 he plays b6, so I'm not sure about that. In knight d5, he'll play probably knight e4. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to develop. And we'll see how this turns out. I am going to end up with a weak pawn on c6, but I don't think the position is that bad for me. I would expect him to actually take and then play g4, bishop g6, and then maybe knight d4, in order to attack this pawn once more. I've been in situations like this before, though. Uh, knight d5 is a move I could play there. I could play rook a6. There's still a lot to play for. It's not a given that black is worse yet. Okay, so if knight d5... Knight d5 is always met by knight e4, is the issue I'm facing right now. Um, B, c5 could still be met by b6. Knight takes b6, knight b5. So I'm thinking a rook move might be called for right now. Let's play rook fd8. I'm just curious how he'll play. Both of us are waiting a little bit just to see what the opponent does. You could play a move like rook e1 if he wants to postpone a capture decision and make me find a move again. Plays g4. Okay, so we're retreating against that. In some ways, I'm happy to see that move because it clarifies the kingside situation. I could try to play f4 and maybe crowd my bishop, but that's a risky proposition for him, too. He weakens his king if he plays f4. Now I have a little bit more influence over the e4 square. Knight d4 could be played. That would attack c6 again. What would I do against knight d4? Knight e5 maybe. And then if f4 I add bishop c5. So he does play f4 straight away. F5 is not a huge threat. I mean, I can just trade and then play the bishop back to h5, so I'm not going to stress about that yet. Maybe rook a3 is useful. I feel like my rook will be better suited on that square than anywhere else. Let's just do it. Now, it's crucial I keep this pawn on c6, otherwise a future knight b5 could be in forking range of my queen and rook. So, for instance, if I push c5 now, again, that's not good because he has this b6 reply. Knight takes b6, knight b5. So this pawn is probably going to be sticking here for a little bit. Queen c1 might not be a bad move for him right now. 
eyeing the rook. Just plays a safe move with his king. Just go h6. Give our bishop and also our king some breathing room. Queen c1. Okay, finally he takes knight d4. Yeah, I was intending to play knight b8 against this. And I kind of have to now. I can also go rook a6. Maybe rook a6 is better. Is my rook really doing anything on a3 anymore? Probably not. Yeah, this move seems preferable. He's got a little pressure. Maybe knight d5 soon? He might go f5, and after pawn takes, take with a knight. He could do that too. He does. Hmm. Okay, let's take. So, is there any use to keeping our light square bishop? That's a dangerous knight. I mean, I probably want to get rid of that. Hmm. If I retreat this bishop, bishop f8, I'm opening it up for bishop f4. Okay, let's take maybe rook e8. We'll grab the file. My rook wasn't doing anything on d8. So I have to keep in mind bishop takes h6 ideas. Bishop e5 doesn't do much. Let's put the rook back on a3. This might keep his bishop in check, stay, stay defending the knight. Can play knight e4. But I think I could swap and then maybe play knight f8 thereafter. I think white's better because he has the bishops and a superior pawn structure but it's still complicated. Rook e1 is a potential move. Okay, he's going to do that. Now, I think knight f8, knight e5 also makes sense, but knight e5 might, knight be, might be more subject to attack. Knight c5 comes to mind, too. Let's do knight c5. It's pretty active. This bishop b4, but I take here, and knight g3 would be a threat. So I'm going to try to drive this rook back and then play knight e6. I like my bishop anchored on that e6 square, or my, my knight anchored there. Uh, then maybe knight d4 is an issue for him. Also with his knight no longer standing on c3, I can play rook a2 in the future. Rook e1 is a possibility pinning me down the e-file. I have a definite speed advantage over Yardbird. Of this I'm pretty sure. So maybe I can make use of that. Okay, let's go rook a2. Hmm. I think I'll bring the knight back, maybe into b3. I'd love to be able to double up my rooks on the second rank. If I can connect them on the second rank, that would just be beautiful. Okay, we're bringing this in. Queen c4. What about bishop f4 now? Let's see if we can swap some stuff on the f4 square. Oh, I dropped my rook. <laughs> I've been doing it lately a lot. It's just like rook dropping all the time. Oh, man. That's so bad. Time warning. And you know what a lot of it is? It's like backward queen moves. I've done this against... Uh, yeah, just the last couple times that I've dropped rooks, it's been my opponent's queen taking it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, if, if I don't drop the rook, then I'm doing pretty well. Uh, like rook b2, I think, in this position. Let's take a look. Yeah, rook b2, and I'm doing just fine. Hmm, that's too bad. Well, at least a pattern has emerged. That's good, uh, good information for me to acquire. Okay, let's, let's look at this game. 
It's a shame it ends on a blunder like that, but what can you do? Yeah, so there's a lot of ideas against G3. Like in Bullet, I've actually played this line. And there's another game on my channel where I played H5, H4, trying to um, just make it crazy. Like there's a game against Daniel Narditsky that I played where I did this and sacrificed the exchange. That was a fun game. Not sound at all, but fun. So C6, yeah, I think the first part of this game was nothing out of the ordinary. Like white often plays bishop g2 in conjunction with b4. So a6, a4, um, e6, rook b1. Yeah, I think all these moves were fine. d3, castle. So he gets b5 in. I take, he takes, knight bd7. And even though a black does end up with an isolated pawn on the c6 square, it's not that simple. It's just, just because I have an isolated pawn doesn't mean that black is automatically worse. Yeah, in fact, the engine is liking my position all along. So here I put the rook into to a3, but this move was also the engine's one of the engine's top suggestions. B takes, b takes. Yeah, and maybe I can plunk the knight on d5. I'd rather play a knight to d5 when knight e4 could be met by a knight capture. So that might be possible in doing this. So rook into a3, he played king h1. Seems balanced right now. Hmm, maybe h6 was too slow. I wasn't entirely sure if that move was necessary. So king h1 actually prepares the knight d4 move with pressure against c6. So that's why the computer probably likes bishop c5. Yeah, it keeps the knight out of d4. And if f5 is played, like I said, we can just swap and play bishop h5. So h6, uh, take, take, knight d4. And actually, I think said knight d4 was even stronger before capturing. Might like it even more right here. Why would that be? So if I play knight b8 now, well, I guess for one thing, it rules out the rook a6 defense. This pawn is still observing a6, so I can't go there. Take and take. Knight d4, rook a6. Oh, he missed a tactic here. Knight takes c6. And I assume if rook takes, knight b5. I saw this, but I didn't think it was an issue because I thought I had queen c8. But he has this move. Aha, uh -huh. fork on the queen and the rook. So my queen has to move again, and then he takes. Yeah, and he's up material. He's up an exchange. Plus a pawn. Hmm. That would have been a nifty tactical shot. Knight takes c6. Followed immediately by knight b5. And there's no real else um, that my queen can go that will communicate with the rook. Like, this looks pretty bad, too. Lines up with uh, the rook, and I'm pinning myself. Knight takes d6. Plus four and a half for white. But he played f5 instead, so I took, he took with the knight. Bishop takes. Rook takes. Yeah, rook e8. Queen f1. I think rook e8's a good move. Grabs the open file. I just have to be wary about bishop takes h6. Like, if this knight were to move, then bishop takes h6 becomes a threat for him. He would probably just walk into bishop takes h6. Now, actually, right around here, I started feeling pretty good about my position because I felt like my pieces were coordinating well. Rook a2 also seems strong. But f7 is guarded, c6 is guarded. These are my two main pawn weaknesses. I was threatening knight d4. Knight c5 seemed good. d4. I thought for a second about this move, intending if he moves the bishop to double up the rooks. Bishop e1, let's say here. I guess he does have rook f2 then. And he can resist the attack. Yeah. Um, but I play knight e4, which seems good. It's just uh, unfortunate blunder after this. Yeah, rook b2. I was very much caught up on the idea of trying to like attack his, his weak h2 square. So I was already skipping in my, in my head to a position like this, where I'm threatening mate. Um, and actually, if this had happened, that wouldn't be Check. so bad because I could I could win his rook. But obviously, I overlooked queen takes a2. Hmm. Okay, so before I wrap up this video, let me show you like this pattern that I was saying. Um, let me see if I can remember. 
Okay, so I played a, a standard game against this player, Alakine 101, where I hung a rook in almost identical fashion. So I'm white in this position. My opponent played c5, and we we're in a little bit of time pressure, but I just I didn't notice that queen takes d7 was a threat. So I played queen takes c5 and just dropped my rook to a backward queen move. And there's another game, uh, I can't remember the opponent, but it's a same-ish game uh, posted within the last couple weeks where I did the same thing. Um, I lost my queen to the rook. That wasn't a backward queen move, but um, I did something where I cut off the coordination between the piece protecting my rook and the rook itself. So um, yeah, we'll just have to watch out for that. Also, let me search my record with Yardbird because I feel like I played him a lot. So according to this, I have um, 26 games against him. I don't know what our overall record is. I think I can do like P stat. Is that the function? Forgot the function to actually see their record against the person. But um, yeah, we played quite a few games against each other. You can see that we played two recently. He has won both of them. And then a long time ago, like four or five years ago, um, I was playing him more often when I was on ICC pretty consistently. So we kind of went back and forth. I was flagging him some. But uh, he's always a tough opponent, Eric Lobron. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.